this is shit. G'day guys, what's going on? Welcome to a new episode and I can't believe the R33 fabrication is all done. As you guys saw in that intro clip, how sick do the welds look? Like check out that. He was gonna clean them up but I love that rainbow burn look so we're gonna leave those in. He did an amazing job, we'll go over the car with you in a second. But I just wanna quickly say, the only things that I need left to do is just pretty much a little bit of the fittings, chuck in some little hoses, put some fresh oil or running oil, fresh coolant, fresh petrol, and soon we're going to start this car up, make sure there's no leaks, make sure everything is okay. And finally, we're going to take it for a tune, do one pull, just clean out the motor with the fresh oil, the running in oil. We're going to drain that out on the dyno, and then we're going to chuck in some fresh oil, and we're going to see some serious numbers. I'll show you guys the external gate, the screamer pipe, the dump pipe is done. Bevan done an amazing job. This is B-World. I'll put down in the comment section of his Facebook page. Make sure to hit him up. He does an amazing job with cooler pipes, exhausting, trailer stuff, anything you need to do with welding. Make sure to hit up Bevan from B-Weld. Did an awesome job, man. I just can't believe how much he smashed out in a day. There was a problem with my external gate. It was too big. So we're gonna use a Turbo Smart external gate, but then I want to cough up another 650 bucks for external gate when I've already got one. So he did an awesome job of extending the piping from the six boost manifold. I don't know if you guys can see that. But there's a pipe that runs down there to the external gate and then the screamer pipe down there. But check out this man, he's done the O2 center, he's chucked in the air temp center, then we chuck the ISAV hose shit that connects from there to here. I've got the hose for that, so I'm gonna chuck that on, I'm gonna chuck the throttle cable on. But yeah, man, look at these welds. He did an awesome job, man. He could have finished this in like five hours if he wanted to, but it was just a few hiccups with that stupid external gate, but he solved it, man. That's how great he is. And with the intercooler, we've gone with the Aeroflow. It's 600 by 300 by 76. I hope this doesn't heat soak. I hope this doesn't have a big pressure drop in it. Hopefully it does its job. He made brackets onto the Rio bar, as you can see there. And then he's made some underneath here. So he's done an awesome job. And the cool thing about this piping is you don't have to run it along here, the next to the turbo. He's done like a bend, which comes down here. And another sick thing that surprised me, I thought he was gonna cut a hole, so I didn't care if he cut a hole. I was like, do you know what? It's part of the job. Have a look what he did. That's right, he didn't cut a hole for the cooler piping. How sick is that? He pretty much just maneuvered it around so I don't have to have a hole in my body. So that's sick. So thank you Bevan for doing that. Man, for the ones that don't know, the block has pretty much been all forged, like a forged con rods, pistons, set the piston ring so handle higher boost. Uh, I kept my crankshaft uh, stock, but we took out the Welsh plugs and we put in some steel plugs so that way we don't lose any oil pressure. Got it rebalanced. Pretty much the whole block, I got um, engine balance from the harmonic balancer to the clutch. The, the engine shot balanced it for me, so it's all perfect. Put in an MLSR head gasket, ARP head studs. We put oil restrictors as well in the block because we're running a GTR N1 oil pump. And also with the head, we've got Supertech valve springs and we've got Tomei pond cams in there as well. So it's gonna sound so sick with this whole setup now. And I can't wait to see some mad numbers. Go out sliding, go out and hitting boost. We're also gonna do a quarter mile to see what it pushes. I know it can handle more than, you know, 400 kilowatts, like this thing is built to handle more, but look, 400 kilowatts with this setup is reliable, it's enough for these streets because there's a lot of traffic, shitty drivers, and it's enough to boost in the hills. I love driving mountains, so you don't need that much power for the mountains. We kept the AC unit, 
kept the heater core so this is a racing engine with a working aircon and heater so that's what you're going to need in winter when it's too hot chuck on the ac when it's too cold chuck on the heater and have some mad power with it as well i don't have the front bar on at the moment because i gotta like you know reshape it to fit here and then i'm gonna resand and respray my front bar as you guys know it's been damaged by idiot drivers that have backed into it someone sideswiped me at one point broke the fog light so i gotta get some bog fiberglass and fix up that front bumper but for now i gotta worry about putting like you know the hoses here because i gotta run like an oil catch can to somewhere around here so run from one here underneath to here one to here relocate this so aeroflow i think aeroflow make like a bracket or a smaller reservoir that i can put this somewhere so it doesn't hit up against the turbo as you guys can see in there i've got to chuck in the coil packs also got a new coil pack harness as well so it's going to look fresh pretty much this is all a fresh build like from ground up i got it all acid bath got it all cleaned the piston heads that I got, 86 millimeters is the standard size, but 86.5, so they had to rebore it to fit those piston heads. So I got that 0.5 mil extra. So I can't wait to see how this thing handles, how it sounds, the performance wise. I'm just happy to have the car back with the fabrication done so fast. And Bevan did, as I said like a million times, Bevan just killed it, man. Like, I'm just loving these welds, man. It doesn't really matter, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim the hose a bit more and push it so there's a gap between the radiator hose and the cooler piping, so it'll be fine soon, it won't be touching. How sick my engine bay is looking with all this setup now, man. This is what hard work looks like. None of this was easy. It's like, as you guys know, like six, seven months ago, I took off my turbo. I was just going to fix the head stuff, change the head gasket, but then when I found out there was so much coolant in my sump, I was like, you know what, might as well go all out now instead of dealing with all this bullshit again so i'm glad i bit the bullet and just chucked in a lot of money full forged my engine and now we're going to see some serious numbers with this new setup so make sure to hit up b weld so i'll show you guys the exhaust i'll show you guys some pictures as you guys can see in these pictures So as you guys can tell in the pictures, he's done the V-bands for me and the welding job on this exhaust system is so sick. He's also lifted up the exhaust so that way if I drop the car down lower, the exhaust won't be as low to the ground. So it's sick that he tucked up the exhaust higher than what it usually sits. So thank you for doing that. Show you guys the weld under here if you guys can see that. Even those look sick. Goes all the way. So we've got the dump pipe with the screamer pipe. Goes into a high flow cut. Then we go into a varix cannon. So with the varix cannon, there's like a remote thing at the top, but he's turned the cannon to its side, so the remote is on the side because where we're sitting at the top, he would have had to make the cannon sit low and it looks sketchy, so he's tucked up the cannon for me as well. I'll show you guys that in a second. See how he's tucked up the cannon? Just looks so much nicer tucked up rather than just hanging, you know, pretty much hovering around to the bottom of the ground. And underneath, you'll see how clean the piping is he's used all stainless steel comes out to here and there's the valve in there so once I connect the remote I can open up the valve and then I can turn it down to warm up my car late at night and then once I hit up the road turn that sucker up the turbo that I'm using is a hypergear ATR 45 SS ball bearing Leo from hypergear put this together so make sure to check out his website he's got so many turbos he can help you with what you need I said that in the last video but he did an amazing job on this turbo and I also am running a T51R mod as well so it's going to be doing that whistle sound up in boost and because we're running no blow off valve it means it's going to flutter so we're going to have that nice whistle and flutter it's going to be so sick and once we're up in boost scream a pipe baby it looks so good also we're going to chuck a pod filter in there so i got to get like a 4 inch pod filter to put in there because this is a 4 inch intake pipe so it's going to sound sick once it doses I should add with the wheels as well, I'm going to be keeping these wheels at the back and this one for skidders for the S14, I'm going to get some new skidders for this, so I'm looking for 17 by 9 skidders and next year I think around January February I'm going to go up to work wheels and get some wheels made, so the wheels that I'm going for the work GT5 three piece wheels, so if you guys know what they look like, this is what they look like. So they're going to look so sick on this R33 as well, so this car is going to look fresh with new wheels and then we're going to sand back the whole R33 and we'll get it re-sprayed as well. 
once this car is tuned, I can start doing a little work on the S14 because I'm gonna go keep a rate next year. I'm gonna try to go to as many events as I can with the S14. And this, I'll take the track days here and there. I won't take it to every drift event. I might take it to a few. We'll take this car to the drag strip as well, see what it runs down quarter mile. But seriously, if you guys wanna see more videos, because this is pretty much the last video of 2019, I can't believe how much I got done in the past like seven months. All right, once this 33 is tuned, we can finally hit up some track days. I'm not gonna go to every drift event in this thing. Like I wanna keep it neat. I don't wanna abuse it too much on the track and out in the hills. That's why I've got the S14. So once this is all tuned and all that, we're gonna go out and have some fun. We're gonna film some boost videos. We're gonna show you guys how much power this thing makes, how it sounds on the streets, get some nice mountain clips and the toe gaze. It's gonna sound so sick up in the hills. Also, we're gonna take this to a drag strip, see what it runs quarter mile. It probably might run high 10s. I'm hoping it runs high 10s. It'll be so sick to own a 10 second car. And with the S14, I'm gonna do a little bit of work to it because we're gonna to go to as many Keep It Read events as we can in this thing, because that's gonna be mainly my track car. So I can't wait to like put some camber arms and all that stuff in there. So I'm hoping January, I think it's January 24th, I'm gonna enter the S14 to Keep It Read. Hopefully this goes all okay, so I, then I can focus on that. But this R33, it's been such a long ride. 2019, this is the last video. I was hoping to have this car started, but as you guys know, ordering parts, getting shit done, it takes time. And when you want to build something, you want to put time into it, because if you rush it, you might miss something. And I've pretty much built this from the ground up and haven't missed one thing yet. Not one bolt I've missed. So I'm keen as to hear how this sounds. And if you guys want to see more videos, pretty much in the past seven months, I've been uploading once a week. I'm going to try to get into this rhythm where I do once or twice a week, then work my way up from there. But yeah, 2019, last year. So thank you guys for the awesome ride this year. It's been so amazing how much more subscribers we've gained just from uploading more frequently. And if you guys want a Clutch Kick Junkie sticker, make sure to check out Clutch Kick Junkie's Big Cartel. That's where I got the stickers. I've got them at $7 for now. And depending where you are, it changes on postage price. So if you're in Australia, I think it's like a dollar postage. If you're out of the country, it's like $3 because it costs more to send out of Australia. I'm sorry about that, but it's just how much it costs to send from the Oz Post. So Christmas is tomorrow, so you guys are watching this on Boxing Day. So I hope you guys had an awesome Christmas, and I hope you guys have an awesome New Year, and I'll see you guys next year, because this thing's going to be starting up, hitting up the diner, and 2020 is going to be a sick year for the R33 and the S14. So much is going to happen. I was looking at getting another build, but I think I'm going to put that money to go to Japan, because I want to go to Abisu in 2020. I just want to go there for a couple of weeks, experience Japan, experience the track, and have some fun out there. So thank you guys for all the love and support that you've put into this channel. Thank you guys for the supportive messages all year. Don't worry, there's going to be heaps of videos in 2020 of the R33 and S14, as I said. It's going to be some sick shit hitting boost up in the hills in this thing, kicking it sideways, popping flames, hopefully. Actually, it should pop flames with this new exhaust setup. I can't wait to hear this thing sound once it hits a gate, man. I'm going to crack a fat when it hits gate. Have an awesome new year, guys, and I'll catch you in 2020. Catch you guys later.